Hello, everybody. Welcome back here to the Wine with Jimmy channel. Now, this is a channel designed to help those of you that are studying the world of wine, but also those of you just want to know more about it. Um, we are here looking at a section on New York State on the eastern seaboard towards the northeast of the United States of America. And we're looking at the Finger Lakes. We're actually looking in that picture at Cuca Lake. And I've got my T-shirt on as well, just to fit in for this video. So yes, uh, we are here on series two of New York State, looking at the Finger Lakes, and it's a five part series. So we have our free video here, this one that's going on right now, doing the introduction and the climate of the Finger Lakes. Parts two through to five, you'll see listed here, are only available on my e-learning portal. You'll find that at the bottom, that's winewithjimmy.com. You'll see social media at the bottom of every slide as well. Okay, let's rock and roll then, talking about Finger Lakes. Here is a map of New York State. You'll see at the bottom here is New York City with Manhattan and that fork that goes off east of that area, which is Long Island. Then New York State goes up from there, the Hudson River, the Upper Hudson, up towards Vermont's border of Champlain Valley. And then across from Albany, which is the capital of New York State, across to the west, you hit Syracuse from Rochester uh, and then Buffalo. So we are basically uh, just south of Syracuse and Rochester for our wine region, just here, Finger Lakes. And it's just to the east of Buffalo. It is directly south of this very large landmass, which I'm going to sort of identify uh, just here, which is a wonderful, huge lake. This is a very deep, very, very voluminous lake called Lake Ontario, which is the natural border of Canada. So our wine region is south of this huge lake and it is south of Canada, of course. We call this upstate New York. Uh, it is the largest, the Finger Lakes is the largest wine producing part of New York State, bigger than anything that's been identified on that map, with around 3,800 hectares undervined, including Vitis vinifera and other Vitis species and hybrids. So we are here in this Finger Lake zone. Now, if you get a bit of an idea logistically about this location, I'm going to show you lots of maps on this very, very shortly, but we are one of the coldest parts of the United States of America. Uh, and of course, when you understand that we are on the border of Canada, we are fairly continental here as well. So away from the, uh, the Atlantic, we're going to be experiencing quite cold weather conditions. But there are things that really do change the Finger Lakes to make it viable for great wine making conditions. Okay, so let's look at a map here. This is the USDA's plant hardiness zone map, which gives you an idea of the uh, average annual extreme minimum temperatures uh, for the last sort of, well, the mid 70s to early 2000s. And of course, when you go into blues and sort of purples, uh, you're talking about um, very cold conditions occurring in the middle of winter. And the green areas are the um, ones that are, are a little bit warmer. Uh, so you can clearly see here that around the Finger Lakes, uh, we have those conditions in play. You can actually see that it, it really does hug the Finger Lakes area in terms of having um, not so extreme continentally cold winters. Uh, so upstate New York, typically we would we would sort of say that it is very cold continental climate with bitterly cold winters. Um, but our area here for the Finger Lakes is cold. OK, so it's uh, a cold continental with warm summers, very cold winters, but not exceptionally cold. The AVA here covers around 11 finger shaped lakes, very, very long uh, lakes, which are very deep, gla ex glacial lakes. And these are wonderful because from a satellite image above, it looks like uh, a couple of hands. You've got all of those fingers, as it is called. Um, and these conditions that these lake causes create the possibility for Vitis vinifera to be produced here. Something very much identified by Dr. Constantin Frank back in the 19 sort of 60s, 1950s, 1960s of, uh, of this area. So 
that's where it's green as you can see just down here on that map um of course we need to talk about rainfall here as well rainfall is typically over 1000 millimeters per year and that's from the geneva station and here you can see it's spread fairly well even across the year but you will find that uh, quite a specific amount comes through the summer months uh, and <clears throat> a little bit less so in in the winter months so this tells you that of course you've got um, some serious amount of rainfall here which can cause problems we can have issues with flash flooding and water logging we can have issues around of course a bit of warm weather during the summer with this moisture creating things like mildew and rot which could be a distinct issue uh, and then even around flowering there could be issues as well so uh, rainfall can be a problem uh, in this area but isn't typically the worst problem it's the winters which tend to be the worst problem so if you do have any comments any questions, any concerns, please do pop them in the comments section below this video. It's always great, great to hear from you. Maybe your experiences with Finger Lakes wine. If you've been up to the gorgeous land of the Finger Lakes wine country, you've been up to Ithaca, up to Geneva, maybe you've done Kuka Lake, maybe Cayuga or Seneca. Let me know about your experiences and the wines you've tasted, please. So let's talk about the lake effect, because as we saw from that um, plant hardiness zone map, there is that green color coming around the lakes, which means that we have warmer conditions. They are around the lakes. So we need to understand why this is in fact the case. Uh, so these lakes from the eye, if you're looking at them on the side of the lake, you can typically see across the lake because there's normally only something like three kilometers, two kilometers, maybe up to five kilometers across uh, the lake. So you can clearly see the other side and then they are not typically that long. So you find that actually from the vision, you'll see that they are actually quite small lakes, but it's very deceptive. It's the depth of these lakes which gives a quite significant volume of water. So you'll see here on this map, I've identified um, four very important lakes, really the right three. So Cayuga, Seneca and Kuka, Kuka Lake uh, are the three most important for viticulture, but also the uh, Canandagua Lake as well on the western side too. Uh, if you take Seneca, it's nearly 200 meters deep. So although it's fairly thin and long, it's really deep. Cayuga is actually 133 meters. Uh, Cuca uh, is uh, 57 at its um, deepest point. It's actually a forked lake. That's why I've got this. It's kind of like a Y shape. So Cuca means crooked lake. And so you've got two bits there. And then Canandagua here is uh, is less so. So you've got probably about, uh, sorry, it's about 80 meters deep uh, in terms of its depth there. Uh, so <clears throat> these lakes can fail to freeze during uh, winter. Typically that's Seneca and Cayuga, uh, but K Kuka Lake, for example, uh, will partly freeze over. Uh, but most of these vineyards situated really uh, in this middle part between Seneca and Cayuga, typically called the banana belt because it's the warmest part. And then here around this side of Seneca Lake and then the historical part around Hammond's Port here on Kuka Lake. Uh, these all get a very important effect here. Uh, so you'll see these arrows, these red arrows are designed to help you understand that this water acts as storage and the heat is trapped in here during the summer months and then that's given off and elongating the season here so that's why we find vineyards hugging the lakes these wonderful deep glacial lakes here uh, so very important uh, lake effect we're going to go into it a bit more the benefits of this so the topography of the region now that map previously um, showed you that there it's not just a deep lake and then flat land around it. We've got some good topography, some hills and mountains around that. So we've got slopes around the lakes and this enables cold air to drain towards the water. As it reaches the specific lake, the air warms and rises, creating a vacuum that draws more cold air off the land. 
Uh, so therefore, you're, you're, you're getting rid of that colder air, and you're replacing it with warmer air. So that's very important as one of the benefits. Another benefit of the lake effect, the lakes can generate their own lake effect snow, which can also help insulate the vines during winter. So you get nice amounts of snow around the lake during winter. This snow builds up, of course, as you'll see here, and it can actually cover the base of the vine, uh, you know, with a foot or two. And it can cover the graft union, uh, which is where you have the scion attached to the root. And that's the most um, vulnerable part of the vine. And if that's covered, then, of course, it has a bit of insulation against the, the bitterly cold air that we find during winter. So this is a benefit. Another benefit picture here of Herman J. Vima. So the lakes provide a warming influence. Now, this is what I alluded to with the uh, cross section with those red arrows. Uh, you have um, a warming influence in the autumn because of that storage of the heat uh, during summer in the volume of water. Remember, they're not shallow lakes. They are really quite deep. And this enables the grapes to ripen over a longer period and reducing those risks of autumnal frosts which could be very detrimental for the yield. Uh, so rather good in terms of those autumnal. And I've got an autumnal picture of Herman J. Vima, one of their vineyards here. As you can see, the leaves on the trees are turning into that wonderful uh, sort of orange, reds and browns. And another benefit uh, here as well. So in spring. Now, in cold places, spring frosts can be an issue, but the cold air from the lake delays the bud burst around the lakes, reducing the chance of damaging spring frosts. So you've actually got a delayed bud burst. Now, with, with many people initially here, they believe that this was a very significant uh, negative, a disadvantage, because it reduces the growing season. But in fact, for the good vines that do well here, and we'll go through those, of course, with the likes of Cabernet Franc and Riesling. Uh, it's a big benefit because it slightly delays the bud burst and then therefore protecting against that time where there's more of an elevated spring frost risk. So very, very important indeed. Well, great. So that brings me to the end of this video on the introduction to the Finger Lakes and its climatic conditions, really including majorly the benefits of the lake effect. Please do join me for parts two through to five, all available on my e-learning portal over at www.winewithjimmy.com. Uh, so you'll need to go and sign up, subscribe to get access to those exclusive videos. Please do get in touch if you have any comments, any uh, questions. Be great to hear from you. Maybe you've got a T-shirt like this and you would like to share about your love for something like this as well from the Finger Lakes. So it'd be great to hear from you. And please use social media if you do want to get in touch in that sense as well. Um, but also, if you find yourself in the UK, please come and say hi for a class, a glass or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Ciao for now. Goodbye.